This week on Cruise In. Uh, I saw the car on top of a transport truck, so I pulled in to look at it. Bought it that day, bought it that afternoon. When you see a good thing, you just got to go for it. I wanted a 60 Cadillac convertible all of my adult life. Well, John, your wish has spectacularly come true. I'm going to chop it right here, and I go, oh, whoa, 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 no, you're not. No, no, you can't do that to this car. Save from the chopping block. This 1940 is something to see. Plus. As soon as you put that old chrome up against new paint, you can really see how bad the chrome is. The Buckeye guys talk about assembling your classic after paint. This week, it's classics for a cause. What's your type? Charity car show from Musketeers Bar and Grill in Richfield, Ohio. It's Cruise In, and it starts right now. This week on Cruise In, we're in Richfield, Ohio for the What's Your Type Charity Car Show to benefit type 1 diabetes. There's lots to see, so let's get started. All right, Alan, what are you standing next to here? 1967 Pontiac Le Mans. This is absolutely gorgeous. How long have you had this? Uh, 34 years. 34 years. How'd That's you come right. across this originally? I was uh, in Cleveland. I was driving uh, close to Brook Park Road and Ridge Road. There was a Southern car uh, dealership. Uh, I saw the car on top of a transport truck, so I pulled in to look at it. Bought really? it that bought it that afternoon. Yeah. Really? And what right. condition was it in when you found it? Uh, it was a complete original car, right down to the bias ply tires, uh, original hubcaps. Had 22,000 original miles on it. Completely original. Didn't run very good. It sat for 10 years, uh, so it needed a lot of work. But the body was gorgeous, uh, completely original car. Very and, nice. And how much work have you done to it? A great deal of work. <laughs> what, a, what have you done? It's a frame off restoration. Uh, the engine was rebuilt, pumped up, transmission, uh, rear end. It's all original GM stuff, but uh, all pumped up and uh, much, much nicer car. Suspension, brakes disc brakes uh, compared to what they had, uh, all, a drum all the way around. Much, much better car to drive and ride now. You know? From what I hear, you did the engine, correct? I sure did. I did. Uh, I had the car painted and interior work done. Most everything else I did myself. So what, what all did you have to do with the engine? Uh, we pumped up pistons, cam, uh, crank, uh, you know, flywheel, and then uh, everything else on it. Uh, when we got it back together, we just uh, put all the chrome on it, and I uh, got it tuned up and ready to run. And I gotta imagine it feels pretty good knowing you did that engine, you get to ride around in this beauty. Oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's really, very nice uh, to be able to just, just in the winter time when I just fire the car up to let it run once in a while, uh -huh. it just feels so good, it makes my day. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. So how long Absolutely. have you had it in this condition? Uh, it's been on the road now for about six years. Six years? Yeah, I and took it off the road, I had it off the road about 10 years. And how often do you drive it around? Um, uh, be on a nice day uh, during the summertime, a few car shows, some drive drive-ins. Uh, not very often, you know. But it, but it feels good when you get it out there. Oh gosh, yes. What are the keys on the dashboard? I love that. Just toss them up there and take off, or what? Well, yeah. Everybody knows whose car it is, so I don't think anybody's going to take the car. I really don't. <laughs> yeah. If someone stole it, you'd see them around again. Yeah, right? I would see it. Uh, yeah, it would be that hard well. to spot. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Do you see many of these out there? Well, you see a lot, a lot of GTOs, but not too many Le Mans or Tempest. Uh, but, you know, uh, that's kind of the difference in this car. It's a very nice car, but uh, but, but being a Le Mans, uh, you don't see many of them. GTOs, you see a lot of those. And what, what makes the difference between the uh, GTO and the Le Mans? Well, there was some slight differences. The GTO, of course, was the high-performance model car of these, uh, but the grille is slightly different. Turn signals on a GTO and the rear tail lights and a hood scoop mostly on a GTO. But otherwise, they're pretty much identical car. And what are your plans with this car? Keep it forever? Are you going to sell it someday? What do you think? I'll probably leave it to my son. There you go. <laughs> Pass it down to the family. He's got to sure. be excited about that. I hope so. <laughs> we might want to watch your back, actually, with this kind of car. You never, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Thank you so much for bringing it out and showing it to us. Absolutely You're gorgeous. Welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. All 
right, John, what are you standing next to here? Uh, it's 1960 Cadillac convertible. This is absolutely gorgeous. How Thank long you. Have you had it? Uh, a little over four years. Over four years? Mm -hmm. where'd, where'd you find it at? It was on eBay in St. Louis. Really? At a classic car dealership there. Now, did you know that you were looking for this or you just. I wanted looking... a 60 Cadillac convertible all of my adult life. I've owned other classic cars, but I always wanted this one. Well, what is it about this car? Uh, I don't know. It's just it's a piece of art. It's sleek, uh, not a, a bunch of uh, stainless steel on the side and stuff like that. It's just, it's a sleek piece of art. When did you, when did that start for you, that you knew you wanted this car? Probably when I was 16, when it was built. <laughs> You're like, I, someday I'm going to get that car. Uh, I don't know when it started actually, but it was a long time ago. And, and did you ever think you'd actually get one, get your hands on one? Yeah, I thought eventually I would. I was just lucky that I found one in this condition and everything. So yeah, I would have taken a lesser condition at lesser money, but I decided to go with this one. Did you have to do any work to it at all? Uh, the only thing I've done is change the carburetor. It had a chrome Edelbrock on it, and I had the correct Carter AFB built for it. There's a guy on, uh, in Hemmings Magazine that builds cars or carburetors from pieces. So it seems like that was important to you to have it back to... Yeah, it just looked funny on a classic car, good looking car, and see chrome underneath the air cleaner. Why, why is, did you, did you, when you wanted one, did you know you wanted it to be original, everything? Yes, I'm only an original kind of guy. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't go for the customs or the rods or anything like that, just original vehicles. Did you, did you have a Cadillac like when you were younger? No. Never did? No, so came up poor. We didn't have stuff like this. So this was, this was always the dream to get this? <laughs> yep. This looks like something out of a movie. It does, yes. I was offered an opportunity to have it in a movie, but I've heard bad things about that in the, during the shoots and stuff like that, so I declined. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You could be famous. <laughs> well, you are famous. I, I am guess, famous now. Well, yeah, yes. exactly. I, I mean, it looks like something straight out of Goodfellas. I think that's, you know, that's the, yeah. it's kind, of the, kind of the feel of this car, right? Yes, thank you. What is the, what's your favorite part about riding this around? It's just like riding what it looks like, a boat, 5,000 pound boat. It is really smooth and, and it takes 70 miles an hour in stride. So it's just, it's a, a lot of fun to drive it. Pinky finger steering wheel. It steers so easily. And how often do you drive it around? Just to shows. Yeah. I go to shows on weekends and I do uh, cruise-ins on Saturday night and Sunday night. So it's strictly a weekend car. And, and how big is that trunk? <laughs> I don't know how many cubic feet it is, but it's big. Like I said, it's from Goodfellas. How many, how many bodies do you think you get? Yeah, well, I, whenever people talk about bodies with me, I always think that they're homicidal people. Well, I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> uh, it, so you, everything, this is, how many miles are on this? Six, it shows 62,000, a little over 62,000. Wow. And is, are you the second owner of this? I have no idea. I don't know any of the history of it other than it was a California car, restored in California, and then it was bought, like I said, in St. Louis, and then they flip it. And, and you were looking for a new pair of pants on eBay and somebody the <laughs> process, right? No, I was looking for cars, looking for Cadillacs. How, how many others did you almost get before you found this one? Well, I had a 60 Cadillac, same color, but it was a flat top four door when I got this. And I had a 73 Corvette at the same time. And once I got this, I sold both of those. Uh, I've had a 46 Ford sedan delivery. I've had six Corvettes. And I had some Riatas for a while, which are a little Buick, fairly contemporary. But uh, I had those. But this is a, the, the only one, the one. This is the one yeah. for you. Yeah. You got your heart. Yeah. Well, it got my heart too. I appreciate you bringing it out today. Thank it's absolutely you very gorgeous. Much. Thank you. Coming up, I'll tell you what. I'll give the guy the money and I'll give you $1,000 to take a hike. He took the money, I got the car. Money very well spent. Next. Welcome back to the What's Your Type Charity Car Show in Richfield, Ohio on Cruise In. All right, Don, what are you standing next to here? Uh, this is my uh, 1940 Ford uh, Deluxe two-door sedan. Bought it four years ago from uh, Southeast Pennsylvania. And uh, it's a very, very nice car. 
Uh, I got the car, it was all in original condition. Uh, everything on the engine was a factory original. I kept breaking down, so I made a mission of replacing certain parts that were gonna break down, so I wouldn't keep breaking down. Uh, so I got everything now set, and it's a beautiful car. It runs like a dream. It's uh, just a, a lot of fun to have. Original condition, huh? Yes, sir. How did you find this? Um, I went to the Carlisle car meet, and it was in the car corral. And I made the guy an offer in the morning. He refused it. And uh, so I went about my business, but everybody was talking about the car. And as I was leaving the show, um, the car was still out in the field. So I went up and I said, Mr. Parson, here's my card. If you don't sell at Hershey next week, give me a call. He said, I just sold the car. There was a young man sitting behind the wheel. He was uh, from Virginia. He was there for the swap meet. I asked him what he paid for the car. I said, I don't believe it. That's exactly what I offered the man this morning. And then the kid said he didn't do well at the swap meet. And as he got out of the car, he said to me, well, I don't even know why I bought this car. I'm into street rods and muscle cars. Uh, I said, wait a minute, you're going to turn this into a street rod? I'm going to chop it right here. And I go, oh, whoa, 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 no, you're not. No, no, you can't do that to this car. Did you give the guy the money? He said, no, I'll tell you what. I'll give the guy the money and I'll give you $1,000 to take a hike. He took the money, I got the car. Wow. So that's how I saved so, it from being a street ride. Did you know how original this was when you bought it? Uh, basically, yes, I did. Yeah. Yes. And, and, and we were talking about the paint job and mm -hmm. apparently it's more original than you could have ever anticipated. Well, again, I mean, people could say things just to up the value of the car. I took it with a grain of salt. But then I've had numerous people and a guy who was supposedly an expert who had this device who scanned the car and told me every reason why it's the original paint. And people say, well, lacquer doesn't hold up. I said, they didn't use lacquer, it's enamel. Ah. Okay, Ford used enamel back then. So I can only go by what the experts tell me. And uh, that's, how I, that's how I ride. What were some of the reasons he gave you why it was for sure an original paint? Uh, he showed me the spray lines that were on the car he showed me no consistency of thickness of paint anywhere on the car. He also found the most common factory paint flaws when they painted these cars. He said, if you didn't have these flaws, I would question the heck out of this car. He said, but you have them. And he said, and the other reason, what do you think it would take to turn this car into this condition? He said, I'm gonna tell you, probably 70 to $80,000. Who's gonna put that kind of money into a car? He says, no, he said, sir, believe me. I'm an expert, I know what I'm talking about, okay. And then he even showed me inside the wheel wells, which I did not know, they painted the wheel wells the same color as the oh, outside really? of the car. Yeah, and you can see, you can actually see it to this day. Uh, but he said this paint job could not have been uh, done after 1952, unless you had the original factory Ford equipment. This is what the man told me. Wow. And I've had other people recognize the same thing. So that's all I can go on. What's it like driving this car? It's, it's like driving, in a cloud. The, I mean, I still have the bias ply tires. I don't get that shimmy, shake, or nothing. Rides as smooth as can be, but when you sit in the in, inside the car, the moment you sit down, you, you swear you're at home on your sofa. It's like, so you wanna fall asleep. It's great. That's not a good idea while you're driving, though. Well, no, I've yeah. done that five times, okay? But <laughs> I woke up each time, that's yeah. good. But, well, the uh, car is still intact, so that's good. That's, that's a good true, thing. Yeah. yeah, and it rides real nice, quiet. It's unbelievable, just unbelievable. So were you looking for something like this when you found it? Or not just, really. just kind of caught your not eye? Not really, I, uh, I, wasn't looking for, I, I wasn't really looking for any car in particular other than a 59 Pontiac Catalina convertible, because that was my first car I had, and can't find it. But when I saw this, I just couldn't, I, I, I had to try to get it. Because you know, most cars this old are not in good shape. This one was exceptional, and the, the fellow I bought it from told me the whole history of the car, He's known this car since day one. His best friend's father bought the car brand new. And then um, he told me the whole story and I said, I can't let this one go. You just don't find them like this. Well, I'm glad you saved it. Yeah, thank you. And I'm glad you brought it out here today. Thank you so much for well, showing thank you. it to us. Next up, paint and body work as the all being of a classic restoration. The assembly process sets the cars apart. The Buckeye Guys, assemble a classic, next. All right, welcome to this edition of Cruising with the Buckeye Guys. Today, 
I have Mr. Don as always with us. And we have a 1965 Mustang coupe here that was just the body work and the uh, paint process all completed on the restoration. Well, now comes the difficult part. Everybody looks at paint and body work as the all being of a classic restoration. Well, the assembly process sets the cars apart, right, Don? Absolutely. You can, you know, completely make or break a car by the assembly process. Um, whether it's the materials you use to finish the car off or, uh, you know, kind of skimping on it and lose a lot of the detail. Yep, and if you put used parts back on your brand new restoration, it takes away from the whole overall restoration process. Yeah, especially like chrome type stuff. Uh, when you take it off the car with the original finish on it, it may not look too bad. As soon as you put that old chrome up against new paint, you can really see how bad the chrome is. So uh, we recommend changing out the chrome or at least having a lot of it redone. Uh, that way you have perfect new chrome with brand new paint and it looks fantastic. And once you dive into a full restoration like this Mustang here in front of us, you miles will do everything correctly, put new wheels on it, new tires, new interior, new trim, new everything. You right. want a new complete car because if you do all used parts, it takes away from it. Absolutely. And uh, like we were saying, uh, using used parts on it, you can tell right away that they're not uh, right. correct. Right. Right. Like this car here, the owner went above and beyond. We put aftermarket air conditioning in, aftermarket radio, aftermarket uh, wiring harness so we can run all the new factory gauges, electronic gauges, all that really cool stuff that's available for these restorations now. Absolutely. So basically with the Mustang II suspension on this, it's gonna drive like a new car. Yeah, I would say another big factor with getting the uh, assembly process done is having a plan and sticking to it. A lot of times, uh, customers are kind of wishy-washy or they we want to change their mind partial, partial way through and uh, you know that causes delays so having a plan and sticking to it is, is a very key component. And the plan is key too and we can help the customers there with their plan to the restoration. We do detailed outlines for them um, and basically we do insurance claim work too for these cars too. We're, uh, we've done work for Haggerty Insurance and American Classic Insurance for these automobiles to get them back on the road after a minor collision. Give us a call at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration, Canfield, Ohio. That's Canfield, Ohio, 330-533-4757. Coming up. All of the kids would uh, stand around the car waiting for her to start it up to see. They never had seen a, an old Model A. And we're still doing that today. From project to pride and joy. The restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration can make your dreams come true. Our master body, paint, and mechanical technicians have over 100 years of experience. They do research, can communicate every detail of the restoration process, and their restorations win big time awards. Buckeye Classic Car Restoration cars have been winning awards since 2001. Let the restoration specialists at Buckeye Classic Car Restoration turn your project into an award winner. Now back to the What's Your Type Charity Car Show in Richfield, Ohio on Cruise In. All right, guys, what are you, uh, what's this car you're standing in front of? Oh, this is a 1929 Ford. 1929 Ford. How long have you had it? 50 years. 50, 50 years. years. <laughs> when, when did you get this in your life? Uh, uh, somewhere in the 1950s. Drove it to high school and I also drove it to college down Ohio State. It's, so it, it goes more than 100 miles. <laughs> and it looked exactly like this when you bought it, right? No, it, it was, it's been all changed, right? Everything's been updated. It's, it's just like a, uh, a project that it's never finished, right? How long have you been working on it? The entire time? Yep. Really? Yep. Slowly. Design parts and threw them away and you know, designed some more parts and some fit, some didn't, right? I tried to put in uh, as many parts as that I could build rather than buy, right? And uh, the only thing I had to have done is paint it, right? I became an interior decorator inside and tried to figure out how to put all the interior in right with no instructions <laughs> so you can imagine when in came out right but 
pretty pretty satisfied with what I got so far. It looks gorgeous. By the way, who's this beautiful young lady you have next to you? Yes. I'm I'm Burl Burkle, and I've been married to this man forever. <laughs> <laughs> and if who's been around longer, you or the car? Uh, the car. The car probably <laughs> by about a year, and then uh, yep. we we rode to high school in it, yep. uh, and we rode to uh, Ohio State. So consequently. It was, uh, my wife was a teacher and uh, during, the, I was in the army and during that time we didn't have a car so she drove it to school and after school the, all of the kids would uh, stand around the car waiting for her to start it up to see, they never had seen a, an old Model A and she drove it to school every day. Right? So it's basically part of the family at this point. Yes, yes. yes. I always Enjoyed say it, it came in his dowry when we were married. <laughs> And we, we decided that no matter what, if we needed money, we would never spend, uh, sell this car. We would just keep it forever. <laughs> so it means that much to you guys? Yes. Yeah. Is it, is it the memories of the car itself? Is yeah. that what it is? It, it, sure. it, you know, value-wise, it isn't that valuable, but it's just <laughs> kind of memories and, and, and time spent, right? Yeah. You kind of look at parts and remember what year you tried to build that thing, right? And it's, it's amazing uh, how many parts they sell for left and right parts of the car and they don't fit. You put one on the left side and you go to the right side and the same part doesn't fit on the opposite side. So, so you learned that the hard way probably. I learned it the hard way. So I know what the car designers have to design now. What was the hardest part of this car for you that you designed yourself? Hardest part? Uh, to do all the wiring because uh, the wiring has all been replaced. Uh, so you had, I had a, a, a roll of wire, right? And then you had to go to all the components, right? And it, it, this actually has turn indicators now. I had I designed a turn indicator circuit for it, right? So it, was, uh, it took a long time to get all the wires in, right? If you missed this year's What's Your Type Charity Car Show, don't worry, it'll be back again next year. And we'll be back next week with another episode of Cruise In.